Hello, CS102 folks. Uh, we're going to talk about the final project, uh, which is to create the survey, as you probably read so far. And this video is going to go all the way down to D. We're going to go through D. And I recommend that you complete this within the first week. Uh, the second week, you can start from E. This survey program is similar to Retrieve. Uh, form OOP2, but this one is self-referential, which means instead of using an HTML form to call it, this program will call itself. It can either be called from a link, at which case it will create a form, or it can be called from the form itself when somebody submits and act very much like Retrieve Form OOP2 did. So we begin by making a copy of OOP2 into survey.cpp and in B you get to learn something new about object-oriented programming. Classes are usually kept in separate files. Uh, they're called header files and they have a .h extension. So let's look at the actual file. This is the header file for web apps. All header files must begin with the, the following directive. It starts with pound signed if not defined and you follow that with the name of the header file with an underscore instead of a period and all uppercase. Follow that with pound sign defined same thing and on the bottom you must end the header file with pound signed end if slash slash and the name again of the header file. This sets up a header file and inside of that you can place whatever code you need. Now we are, in our case, we're going to put all the includes for that we're used in our class uh, functions and you're going to follow that with uh, declaring the struct fields and then you declare the web apps just like you did in OOP2. You have all the little functions you made uh, followed by how many create array, parse, and param, and at the bottom we have the private variables. This, this is the complete header file. Uh, at this point all you need is to include that header file in the header of the survey.cpp file. As long as, well let's look at the example right here. Uh, we got include quote and the name of the header file. As long as that .h file is in the same directory as the survey.cpp file when it compiles, uh, all the code for our class will be included in our program. Of course at this point I recommend that you test the program, make sure it runs and you can make a new, f a new HTML form here and uh, just point to now the survey.cgi and make sure it works before you get on to part C. On to C. This is where the fun begins. I give you some code and this code is going to replace everything in main from OOP2. Uh, I recommend here to leave that code at the bottom because we're going to be using some of it in various parts of this program. Let's look at a better version of this. Okay, so on the top of this, of course, are the includes which which the HP is part of. It doesn't show here. But you see that we are going to call and we're going to make an object right now from web apps. Here we have a build form uh, prototype. And this will be your code, of course, but here is an example of how to use radio buttons. So I trust you will look at this code and most likely make use of it in the survey. But what's really important here is the structure of the program. This is the entire structure of a self-referential program. You have an if and you have an else. First of all, since we made an object, the constructor uh, g already gave us a value in count. And so if count is not equal to zero, that means that the program has been called from a form because some, some user has just made a choice, clicked submit, and our program survey.cgi 
is receiving that field which means the count to be greater than zero or not equal to zero in this case at the beginning of this program we're just going to make a debug to say yes it's most likely coming from a form otherwise if it is equal to zero it means that there are no fields coming through therefore we're just calling the program from a link so else at that point then what we have to do is build the form and this is why we have our functions down here to make that to be ready for that possibility so let's run this program this is a, a little more advanced than the one we are starting with because we, these are debug statements from the next header that we're going to be using but just to give you an idea we're going to run first survey.cgi directly without coming from a form and let's reload this and notice the debug in the else with count equals zero because it comes from a link not a form so count is equal to zero and it goes ahead and provides the form this is a, the simple form that I just showed you over here creates a yes and no but when you submit this let's say we say no we're gonna submit and uh, now the count is equal to one now this one also redoes, redoes the form because it does everything else including showing the result of the survey which ultimately you folks will be also responsible for do keep the HTML file simple until you get the code worked out on to D in this portion we're going to add a new class called fileapps.h uh, this one includes a bunch of code that we have not had time to study during the semester this is how to save data to disk and read from disk the code is all given to you all you have to do is learn how to use it the constructor in this class is going to require a file name that file name represents the the file into which all the votes are going to be saved it will be created automatically by the class you don't have to worry about it so the important part of this part of the program is starting to deal with the first if if the count is not equal to zero it means it's coming from a form therefore we need to get a vote and get the vote prepared to be saved to disk a lot of that will come directly from the old program OOP2 and the first statements we need is this one you can just use it as is uh, we are declaring a string called data line and we're going to create a function called prepare vote with the number of fields we have received which of course in this case we know is only going to be one of course as uh, always when you just uh, populate a variable you should debug it immediately make sure it's okay once that data line is fine then we're going to call the function from our class called save data line and we pass the vote in its proper format and this function is simply going to save the vote to disk now here's how to prepare the vote which you need to you need, we need to create this this function right here it's all laid out over here prepare vote is going to output a string it's going to be the vote obviously and this is very much like OOP2 the first thing we have to do is we have to create a dynamic array name value pairs and to it's only going to hold one vote it's a one element array but we don't care because this is the way our parse and our param work so how do you create a dynamic array of count whatever it is we put the statement right here and we can this is a time when you can use the old command from oop and here it is fields pointer name value pairs will create array will get count so you just copy that and paste it right in here um, then we are ready to parse since we have an array ready 
and again you can use your old parse command and paste it right there and now we are ready to use param because now we're going to um, we're going to get the value for vote we're going to put that data in this variable and now you of course we're going to debug it make sure that we have it and now we are ready to return that vote and this is a concatenation vote concatenate to vote a bar or a pipe is called uh, followed by a return character because it needs to go in our uh, text file in that in that format and I need to show you the text file itself this is how it's going to look like ultimately here's the vote of no and we're, we're concatenating a pipe and a return characters and this is why every vote is going to be a separate line and it's going to be very easy to read this file and and rebuild an array with all these votes and come up with a tally at the end so that's really it on prepare vote and that will conclude D one last thing once the data line is sent to object method uh, save data line it will the the code is already is already going to send you a debug statement to confirm the success uh, of putting that data in survey.txt now all you have to do is open that file manually and make sure that it's true then you have completed D thank you very much make sure that you complete that within the first week very good good luck and thank you very much